Adam, you were a late bloomer, right? When you were growing up, I was. You went we, like you you were you were little and puberty then, when I and then all 20, of a sudden you 20, just sprouted. No way. No, <laughs> shut up. When did you when did you hit your? I don't think anybody goes through puberty at twenty two. That can happen. <laughs> no. When did you finally? When did you hit your your? You know, when did puberty kick in for? Because it was later. Yeah, I was like uh, eighth grade, I would think, somewhere around there. But when your height, though, right? Didn't, weren't you? Oh yeah, no, my height didn't. I didn't sprout up until my senior year of high school. Yeah, see, that's a little while. Wow. Yeah, I was. Well, I remember I said I was five three as a freshman, so I played point guard my freshman year of high school, and then by my junior year, I was playing like power forward and center. So I was six foot tall uh, my junior year. So it was the summer between my sophomore year and my junior year when I started when, happening. Yeah. Yeah. When the magic started yeah, happening, yeah, I guess. Did, did now you Two know why days. I'm asking this question? No, I don't. I have what? a theory. What? Let's hear it. Because uh, we were we were watching the video of us doing the uh, the the drinking game, you know, the Zbytex drinking uh, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that one, and you and you won. Oh yeah, what a great tournament, right? Yeah, oh. you won. I, I love to win. And you let oh. out your. You have a very <laughs> distinct like yeah. your signature victory scream. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but you, you instantly lose your voice. I it's, do. It's very puberty like. <laughs> so when I used to, I don't know what, why. I don't know what. That and you is. right now you're singing out in the hallway. Yeah. I'm like it sounds like a 13 year old Adam singing. Oh, 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 oh. So, so I wonder if that's like, number one. I feel like that's gonna kick in later. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know what. I don't know what the deal is. Yeah. So that used to happen to me. <clears throat> I couldn't. I could never control it. Happen. Uh, <laughs> Once every boot camp, <laughs> well, no. you're teaching every your, single every single. So you're it, teaching it, your, your it was the, yeah, it was the joke. Like every every, every morning, <laughs> yeah. No, you knew that at one point. At one point, it would I would squeak, and the whole class the whole class would just bust up laughing. Yeah, I see, oh, everybody it's thinks it's hilarious. It's <laughs> so I, funny, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. It's not funny when you yeah. can't control. Hey, it your kid, that. your kid's gonna grow up and he's gonna be like, my dad oh, never yeah. yells. He's always calm. <laughs> he doesn't know he should want to yell. But because yeah. the squeak will happen. Yeah. Oh, speaking of this, this, yeah, all fear is gone. Speaking of that, I did my first like no to Maximus. Did you really? Yeah. What yeah. was he doing? I don't even remember what it was. I was he was doing something like uh, I think he was biting. He was biting with his teeth on me on my uh, finger. He's got teeth now, right? His bottom teeth came in. Uh, yes. And and he kept doing it. <clears throat> and I have yet to do that. Like I have not. Uh, raise my voice. We have nothing like that in our house. And so, you know, this was the first. I looked at him. I said, no. Did he and cry? No, he didn't cry, but he froze. He completely froze. You traumatized oh. him, bro. <laughs> Don't say that. Don't <laughs> no, say that. No, no. <clears throat> but it, 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 did, it did spark up a discussion with Katrina and I because she says like he's he's now he's bit her too with the uh, with obviously when she's uh, feeding him. Oh, I can't even imagine. That's right, right. right. You're and nursing she, right and, on the nipple, and she told me the Dude, same thing that that's the first time sensitive. that she's mm. kind of like given him the no, you know. And she says like he does he did this because I was telling her this happened to me, and she I she I guess she told me that oh yeah I know I've she says I've had to tell him no like sternly like for the first time, and he freezes and I'm like yeah it's exactly what he did to me. I said you know it's. It's interesting, right? It made me think about like the household that I grew up in when there was a lot of screaming and yelling and all that shit. And there there has to be some some value and power to that and 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 probably a lot of people don't think about it and they uh mm. they use that a lot. No, ah, don't this and screaming and fighting in a house and then and then the kid gets to a point where you you go to discipline them or you have to raise the level every time yeah. right it, it's it's the same on the opposite end of that is the whole boy who cried wolf thing right if they're like you know outside and they're making a noise that's like really loud and like you you're like in panic mode out there trying to like help them out but it's really like a small thing and you're like you can't you can't do that you can't like go to that level every time and freak me out and and it is one of those things like it gets overused all the time because it's effective but you want to hold that as like you right. Know, part the, of your the, cards. Well, what I was telling Katrina is like you know I think it's important to uh, for us uh, that we think about that that don't waste those you know don't waste those every time he does something you're not you don't like don't don't waste it on just every every time to correct him yeah. use it when there's a major lesson behind it like you know you hit another kid or you do something that. Like that's a, just no. That's absolutely not. You do not, or a, where they could potentially hurt themselves, or something that reaching the light socket or whatever. Yeah, so thing, things that are dangerous, things that are really bad behaviors, mm -hmm. stuff that you really want to correct, and you can actually educate and speak to. Save those moments of that stern. Hey, 
don't, mm-hmm. you know, or that getting getting on with it. Otherwise, if you every single time they're doing something you don't like them to do, or they're you know playing with their toys and throwing it or whatever, whatever sh- kid shit, mm-hmm. right? If you waste that that stern voice every time, I would I would imagine it would start to fall on deaf ears after a while. And yep. that was a conversation we had last night. It was the first time that I had done that with him. And I, I was like, oh, wow, look at the power of that. Like he like froze in his tracks and was like looking at like, I haven't heard this from dad mm-hmm. yet. It was wild. I used to uh, I used to be able to make my kids cry just by looking at them. <laughs> I'm serious. If I gave them a look, like I'd look at them and they... Yeah. You know, they start men crying. Men who stare at goats, men who make kids cry. Yeah. Do you just wait till you, now have you, did you, have you felt bad? You haven't felt bad yet. Cause you just did. No, that was, this was the, yeah, that was, a, that was the first. Yeah. It's right. coming. Oh, that was like the other day I, I answered on my questions. I think I brought this up too uh, on the podcast. So was the, you know, the, the big, the biggest fear I have as a father is knowing that it's inevitable. I'm going to do something wrong or whatever. It's like, it's what is, the, what is it I'm going to do? Hopefully I, it's something. I, I spent the first, I spanked my son once <clears throat> and my daughter never. And I spanked my son because because he uh, he threw a block at my dad at his grandfather hit my dad in the head so I spanked his little hand and he looked at me and then he hugged me and cried oh fucked me up only one time spanked him on the hand I never spanked my kids really no it's, oh I'll definitely spank mine no yeah. Yeah. you know why I won't I'll tell you why because it's weird I'm way bigger than them it's so weird to it doesn't like, matter it's physically to, to me it doesn't have to be uh you're not you're not I haven't had to, you know. Here's the deal. Here's why. Because I've I've been effective other ways. That's what it is. Well, I'll never, I'll never, I'll never spank like I got spanked. Right? I'll never kick them. Yeah. 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 I'll never spank like I did, which is like you know, every time you did something wrong, it was you know, you're coming home and it's the belt or the spoon or whatever like yeah. that, and you had to wait in your room. And it was a big old deal. I'll the same way that I use the stern voice is the same way that I think I would use like a whack on the back of the diaper, like when he's doing something that could either hurt himself, like to catch him it off guard sense. and go whack. Like one hundred percent I will do that. Just I, there's a little no, course correction. Yeah, not a fucking hit him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's not designed to hurt him. It's a, designed to get his attention sure. right away and correct whatever it is that I that I see doing. I don't yeah. see it. Justin, were you were I, I thought I'd do it more. To be honest, but <laughs> I don't. I don't use it very often. Like, if it, like if at all. Like it was only when they were like during their like terrible twos and you know sort of like in where they were just kind of going all over the place. It was very chaotic, and I was trying to like you know show boundaries in certain areas. Like it was, you know, when it was like in in an act of pure defiance. And, and, and I would like determine what that was. And I would, even before I would spank it, I would like build it up first. I wouldn't do it right then. I would, I would make them go to their room and then I would like kind of try and like get my heart rate down and I would breathe and then I would go and they knew it was happening. And so it was like, I don't know, I guess it was more, uh, uh like <sighs> procedural. Like I was like, you know, like I was setting them up for it and they knew it was like, the, the whole thing behind it was the anticipation of it. And so then I would barely even, yeah. you know, hit them to where it was just like smack and then they'd yeah. start crying. And it was, and it was just to, uh, for me, it, it's just to kind of slow down and like make a point that this is something that I'm not going to tolerate. And if you do it again, then, you know, the, the con- there's consequences, yeah. real consequences. Did you catch that, Sal? That he, he lets it build up before he spanks it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. No, wow. That, that's, that's, a, that's, um, a, that's, exa- that's your words. <laughs> it, I mean, and it happens. Like, it, yeah. you, you can use that in, in other directions. Yeah. Did you? Now, now uh, that makes sense because I think if you- Which part? Thank your kid. Not that one. Okay. That one too, though. But if you if it, if it, if you spank your Foreplay. kid and you're angry, you're more likely to display the anger. Yeah, you know, rather than I am not a, I'm not pro that. What's yes, like, yeah. yeah. Like, and, oh, and, this is what you do when you're angry. You know, you know. And I gotta check myself because I <laughs> I do have tendencies towards that. You know, because I mean I've been in you know very violent sports and you know like there's like dire consequences for certain things and like you know my my tendency is to kind of uh, like react in and so like i've been very very conscious did, of that with my kids did did now uh, temper tantrums did your kids when they were two three throw <clears throat> temper tantrums did they did you see those uh yeah um yeah i saw those it, you know like uh, one kid versus the other sometimes like more and it was and i had to learn how to navigate through that and a lot of times it was like uh i had to learn how to give space uh for certain things like if if i was like trying so hard to like you know let's go it was usually like when we we're trying to leave somewhere and they were like so fixated on this thing like especially like my youngest he gets really fixated in an activity he's doing and i had i've had to like really learn how to like give him proper warning 
And then like, okay, when we're leaving, you know, it's 10 minutes, like five minutes, you know, one minute and like, you know, let's break it off. Cause like, if I just like rip the bandaid, uh, there's hell to pay. Like uh, he's just as stubborn as I am. Dude, my daughter used to throw temper tantrums that I swear to God, if there were a, a way to tap into the energy that she was producing, mm -hmm. you could power a small town. <laughs> Like I couldn't, it was it just turns into Blanca from street fire. It, it, <laughs> it was, it was incomprehensible. I would look at her and go, how was this energy possible? Just <laughs> like, wow, this is insane. One time she was at the store and she threw such a crazy tantrum. She hit her own head on the, on the, uh, you know, on the, what is it? The cart or whatever. So oh, I had to man. like put my hand behind her and like kind of protect her from hurting herself Yeah, and just let her burn it off. Wow. Just lose your shit. That's fine. We're going to be here for five minutes. I'm already embarrassed, so I'm not going to get more embarrassed. Yeah. That's perfectly fine. Well, isn't that the, the prevailing theory on that is that when they have those, you're supposed to let them have it out. Don't and, react. Yeah, right. Let them have it out. Don't, don't react yeah. with your emotions and then actually have them articulate what they're feeling right. and, and and actually have empathy but, for what they're go you know going through. Do how hard right? it is, though? Oh, I, I know. I imagine. Especially, especially on a time schedule. <laughs> oh, yeah. dude, you try to get a, a two- or three-year-old kid throwing a tantrum in a car seat. It's the most impossible thing. <laughs> you can't do it. Yeah. I mean, and, I mean, you can if you're going to use like massive, you know, if you're going to like, no, you're getting in the seat. Uh, but they will <laughs> stiffen out like a board and you can't. Fit him in the chair. You can't block him in. So you're going to be late. Wherever you're going to go, you're going to be late. It's such a challenging, oh my God, especially if you have multiple kids. Yeah. I don't know how my mom, well, I know how my mom did it. She used to throw shoes at us. That's, <laughs> yeah, what, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what she did. She used to, I remember when I was a kid, I remember because my mom had four kids and we were bad. We were all bad kids. We just, we, we do all kinds of great. And I remember when I was, and I was the oldest, right? So I, I got a little older and got out of that stuff, but then mm -hmm. I had all these younger siblings. So my mom, I would witness my mom lose her shit because, you know, she got three little kids or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking too as a kid, like, man, my mom, why'd she lose her temper like that? That's crazy. And then I became a parent. And I'm like, oh, I get it. <laughs> yeah. I know why she did that, you know? Oh, man. Oh, one time my brother, <laughs> was, uh, we went grocery shopping and she would take all of us. So have you ever gone grocery shopping with one little kid? Oh, it's the worst. Okay. I, it's the worst experience of my life. Okay. Go with four kids yeah. and three of them being little. The, you know, the, you have the youngest is like, you know, one and a half and all the way up, right? Bro. Little well, kids. What are you guys' uh, – how many years apart are so you? So it's four years apart between me and my sister, and then it's only one and a half or two years apart between all of them. So I'm I'm much older than the rest of them in, in comparison or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we were at the grocery store, and my brother was uh, – he was just a terror. He was just a terrible little kid, <laughs> and he escaped the, the – the uh, the shopping cart because my mom would put him inside the shopping cart, keep all the kids in there to kind of control him. Yeah, and he would just climb. She turned around, he escaped, mm -hmm. and he ran. And he was hella fast too. He was a fast little three year old. And he jam, and then he was just pulling shit off the shelves <laughs> <laughs> as he was running. And my mom wasn't uh, fast enough to catch him, you yeah. know. And this is in the grocery store. So get back, and then she'd tell me, "Get your brother." And so I'd run after him, and he'd ha ha ha, knocking shit off. Finally, I see a, a slipper whoosh, fly through the air. Bing, bing, hit him in his little leg. In the leg. grocery store? Yeah. <laughs> hit him in his leg. You know, he falls down. Ah, cry. <laughs> and the people looked at my mom like, how could you ever throw? And the look she gave to back the at little them. little angel. Dude, the look she gave back at them was like, I will throw my shoe at you too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't, yeah. don't fuck you with don't me. You understand. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I understand. Those, those those shopping cart, like, it. oh, dude, just going to the grocery store is like nightmare. Dude. Oh. They just take off. It's anarchy. It's grabbing stuff. It's, I want this, I want that. And then they just take off on you. Where are you? Oh, dude, it's it's it's, no, uh, it's no, crazy. I'm not, oh. I'm not looking forward to that. It, it's like a transformation too. They go from being like a sweet little, you know, baby taller and then boom. Yeah. They realize they can say no. They realize that they can. Yeah. They have I want some this control. cereal. Ah! Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. I'm not doing what you want. Yeah. You ever have your kid look at you dead in the eye and then do some shit? Like, yeah. you tell them no. And then, so <laughs> my son did this oh. a couple. He would do this. <laughs> yeah. I would say, don't do that. And then he would look at me in the face and then do exactly and what. Then do I'd, it. Yeah. Like, draw. I'd say, do not spill your juice on the floor or whatever. 
And he'd look at me and he'd slowly pour it on the floor. Yeah, it's a power move. Yeah, like, yeah. what are you going to do? Totally. Dad, yeah. you ain't going to do shit. <laughs> <laughs> I control this house. <laughs> you know? Justin, aren't you uh, aren't you adding a new family member to your- uh, I am, dude. Yeah. Like, yes. Are you, are you going to go through with it or what? I mean, apparently it's happening. So, so what are you doing? Uh, so we have had this, well, we I'm, I'm including myself in this now because it was originally Courtney's idea, but- uh, we are getting another dog. So we're getting a puppy, which was supposed to be, I tried to put like as many roadblocks to this as possible just to see like, you know, is this really what you want? Like, do, are, are we going to add another sort of thing into the mix? Like we're, we're pretty balanced right now. We're, we're doing well as, as a unit, you know? And like, I feel like, like everything's kind of working. Like, and so, sh you know, I think that, uh, have, being home and then being with the dog and seeing how, uh, you know, crazy. The dog just cannot get worked enough, cannot walk enough. Like it needs, like he just needs more like constantly. And so, uh, we were actually talking to your sister about, cause she's had the same breed. The Weimaraners are just like so high energy mm. and like, they just need to just run and, and they need to, to play with another dog and all that. So, uh, I, Anyways, it, I knew that ahead of time too. I was like, they do better with like two dogs, and so I guess like. So you're getting another white. A right small? Now? No, we're getting a smaller dog. So actually, it, it's funny to me because I look at it like we're getting a pet for Arlo. <laughs> a pet yeah. for your He's pet. gonna have a little pet, you know, to to hang out with, is be his little buddy, uh, and hopefully his energy will then sort of like draw his energy down. Is the theory? It's all theoretical. <laughs> yeah, very. I don't really know if this is gonna play out that way or not, but could uh, multiply the energy as it could do. It, it definitely could, and I, I that was my argument, and so. Uh, but you know what? I'm supporting her in this, and so I'm, you know, and I love dogs, so I'm all about it. But you gotta get rid of the chickens, okay? We gotta get a fence up, so all these things like we can keep them confined more on our property, uh, and so like all that stuff's in the works. And and so I was like, okay, if you do all that, so she's flying down while we're in Ohio uh, with the kids to go pick them up and bring them back and. We'll see, dude. dude. Puppies are a lot of work. I know, man. They're a lot of work. It was supposed to be like more towards one year old, and then the breeder was like, "No, you know, like I like there was some miscommunication on the date, and it turns out we're getting him when he's like four months old." Oh my god! What, now, <laughs> like, what, oh no! What's the breed? It, it's a dachshund. Oh, I like, love a those little mini dachshund. Yeah, it, it's cute, I had one I cute as hell. It's got that like like a unique like spotted pattern to it. I'll show you guys a pic. So do you know? Super remember, cute. Now, are you still dealing with the rat problem? Uh, yes. Okay, and so Dotsons are great for rats. Oh, little, little, like, uh, yeah. They're great rat hunters. That's right. That's why they're, they were bred to Them be- Them and terriers, right? Yeah, yeah, they're bred to be long, small dogs because they would hunt animals in their holes, their little burrows and stuff like that. Like ferret animals yes. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, so yeah. you might have, you might have salt. Hey, maybe. Yeah, I didn't even think about so that. So no more chickens, huh? Yeah. Are we doing a, like a barbecue or something this weekend? <laughs> I was going to say, we got to, <laughs> we're going to do a hot ones episode where we so, do I, I mean, how, how many yeah. do you, how many do you have still? I mean, are you still got- I have a uh, four and they're actually going to go to one of Courtney's friends who has her own, like, uh, I don't know, harem of chickens. What do you call it? Flock of chickens. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so she's taking them in and I'm just like, hey, great. You know, I am going to miss the eggs. That's it. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, like, so they're going to be gone and then that whole space opens up for me. So now I have plans to then, you know, this summer build out the deck and then everything outside is going to be more groomed and, you know, like it's, it's good progress for me to then build, you know, what I want to do outside. So looking back, is that like a complete failed experiment or what do you think about it? I don't know. I, I think that was I mean, you got a lot of free eggs out of it. Yeah. I got free eggs out of it and the kids initially were all about it when they were like little chicks and then we actually went through that whole thing where the little chicks, they grow up, we feed them and all that. And then they moved outside. And, um, so they, but then they lost pure interest in it. And it was just like, there's just chickens and there's shit and it smells and you know, all that kind of, and there's rats now. Yeah. And, you know, and then it was starting to like, you know, there's just like too much going on there. So I think that it was cool at the time, but now it's time to move on. Mm. Yeah. I uh, I wanted to try those eggs. I still haven't. Oh, really? You ever have oh, eggs? Oh, you know what? I still have them, so I'll bring some in. Well, I would love it. You ever yeah. seen the difference when you crack those eggs open? Oh, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. like, so I uh, I uh, get the pasture- Super bright. I get par pasture-raised <laughs> organic eggs, or I've had eggs from friends who brought them over. Uh -huh. Then you buy the regular organic eggs or whatever. They look dead. 
They look pale compar- in comparison. Like yeah. the, the, those eggs are are like well, a bright. They're like depressed. Like a bright chickens. gold, reddish gold color, and then the regular ones like a pale. It's it's like they're not the same. Yeah. Definitely not the same. Yeah. What's that? Do you get okay? So um, I can't find the link. I'm so irritated. Somebody sent me a link and I've lost it. Apparently, there's this destination like party place that you can go to where there's like no rules and you go and they and you do drugs and Ibiza. It's, crazy. it's not Ibiza. No. Haiti? No, what what's it called? Haiti? How do you spell that? I don't know. Is that it? Haiti. H A I T I? Is no or no, is it H A D E E maybe or something like that? I don't know. 80s? I don't think. <laughs> yeah. No, anyway, there was this there's this place where it was like that's how they were advertising it. They were advertising it where you show up, you pay a ton of money, yeah, and it's anything goes. Is this like a Dan Bilzerian island or what? It's something like that, which I think is hilarious. Although, do those places ever turn out the way you think? They're tur- <laughs> you know no, dude. Well, I, I know. I know. Haiti was like always a bunch. It was like where all the swingers went. That's been around uh, for a yeah. long time, and that that was a popular place where everybody goes and you know fucks each other. That's in a they party and drink and do. Everything. Oh, I think I know what you're uh, talking about, but I don't. That's think been it's around called, for a long time. It, and I think it's called something else, though. Isn't it called? Oh, Doug pulling maybe, something. Maybe Sex Island. It, whoa, whoa, that it's might the, be it. Sex Island. Sex Island, maybe. where the guests part pay to party with prostitutes. Holy shit! Well, that's I, I see. that's a, that's a little different. Yeah. No, there was there was another there was another where, place too. Where's that, Doug? <laughs> where, 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 <laughs> where's asking, that asking for a friend. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Boy, yeah. I don't know. We had a new sponsor. Columbia. Yeah. She just Columbia? anchor you know down. And- yeah. Well, the, it it's never ends. I, you know, it's funny. Um, uh, now that we've had the show and we have people following us, have you guys gotten there's people any, listening to us? Yeah, I know. Have are. you guys gotten any messages from? Uh, Swingers, quote unquote swingers, or yeah, people we, trying to. We've met them before. I mean, there's been people. I remember when we first started. I feel like this question is a trap. It Justin. is. Stay away from answering this. I know. <laughs> no. Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Adam. Yeah. No, yeah. I'll tell you. Stop me from to save you throwing myself under the yeah. bus. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's, it's, it's <laughs> crazy. I take the fifth. Go ahead. Oh, finish man. with your story, Sal. Close. A while ago, a while ago, no joke, there was a person that DM me, was acting whatever. I, I just ignored them. Then they went to Jessica. And they tried to message her and sent her pictures, and it was a girl wow. that was doing all this. That's awesome. That's yeah, there's a lot of no, it's not, bro. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> I mean, I'm not mad if someone's trying to send Katrina naked pictures and it's a chick. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, all right, whatever. Hopefully, she shares them with me. We yeah. talk about it. Yeah. What do you think? Do you huh? know who this is? Yeah. No, show me more. I can't. I, I can't tell if I know. It's, it reminds me of like my friend a long time ago when we were like teenagers. Like he's like, dude, I know where a nude beach is. I was like, oh wow, that's so cool. Like we're gonna see like all these. Naked chicks, and we get there, and it's just like, like the like if there was a, a girl there, it was like somebody's grandma, you know, and like just sunbathing. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Wrinkly, we drove eight. We drove droopy. We, dro- we drove you know, eight hours for one boobies, and, Wait, then, and then like you get <laughs> all the dudes, like just like. Right next to her, just like bleh, yeah, like uh, putting like lotion on on their like you know uncircumcised hogs and everything. Oh, like, oh, my, gross. oh my god! Yeah. I don't even see all this. So would you say you drove eight hours? We drove eight hours for one in high school. We were seniors in high school, and uh, I, <laughs> that's I re- what you do back in the day. No, no I totally. When you when you have your you have your li- you've only had your license for what two years by that time, or in my case, I was only seven, eight seven hours. Years. To see and we're like, <laughs> what, what should we do this spring? It was a spring break. We're like, what should we do this spring break? Let, let's go find a nude beach and let's go to it. And I remember we searched for a nude beach, and I think the closest one that we could find at that time uh, was down in San Diego. And so we straight roadied. All the way to San Diego. All the way to San Diego. And we had, so he, my my friend, that one of the friends that we, there was four of us that went down there. He had an older sister that w- that went to uh, San Diego State, and she had a little apartment down there. So we're like, oh, we'll just go crash at her apartment. But the main purpose of the trip was, uh, you know, go down, get drunk, fucking go down to a new beach. Yeah. <laughs> it was so terrible. I think, was, <laughs> I think we saw three naked bodies, and they were like, I don't think any of them were under the age of 60. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was such That's a, what I'm saying. It typically uh, yeah. works out that way. Terrible. Well, well when, you're, when you're a kid, you think <clears throat> nude beach, therefore everyone's going to want to, as soon as they show up, they're just going to want to have sex with me. Yeah, you think of like the Playboy Mansion naked. Like you're like yeah, yeah that's probably no, what it's like. It's very like it has to be super rare. You're gonna find hot people. Yeah, there's a there, us, there's so. a there's a nudist colony up around I think near you, Justin, right up in the Santa Cruz mountains. Totally, isn't yeah. there one? It's yeah, called uh, I, I can't remember the name of it, but there's supposed to be up one. Yeah, up yeah, no, I think you're right. Yeah. I can't imagine too many hot people up there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean Vegas. Of, well, Vegas has got some hillbillies. topless pools that are pretty legit. I mean, you go to Vegas, you get some some some. Well, there you go. That are yeah, you know, somewhere like that. I'm sure that the pool's a little better. 
Yeah, yeah. I went to How did a, you even take us this direction? I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, I don't know. I just felt like talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what are you going to do? Didn't you? What did you do this last weekend? Didn't oh, you? dude. Uh, I got to tell you guys about the wine um, tasting trip we did with yeah, my family. Your fa- yeah, that's that's right. So my aunt organized a like a wine tasting trip for all her siblings. So it's my aunts and uncles um, and then the older kids, the ones that could drink. So there was a, it was a big group. We got on a bus and then we went to different wineries, had a total blast. So when she organized it, um, this is when we first started working with uh, Z-Biotics. So I thought, what a great opportunity, because I've been, I've been waiting to be able to talk about this. I said, what a great opportunity to test out uh, the Z-Biotics. For the listeners who don't know, Z-Biotics makes a, a, it's a genetically modified bacteria that produces an enzyme that breaks down something called acetylaldehyde in the body. And acetylaldehyde uh, is a byproduct of alcohol metabolism, and it builds up in the body. When your body can't catch up with breaking it down, if it starts to build up too much, you get these side effects yeah, that are- The hangover feeling. It's right? like a hangover. The headaches, right? the stomach ache, nausea, all that Inflammatory stuff. Inflammatory feeling, that toxic feeling or whatever. Yeah, achy. Yeah, and, so, and we tested it ourselves. Obviously, before we worked with the company, we tested it a bunch of times. I tested it in Maui. And every single time, it's uh, it's funny. Every time I test it, I it's think to myself, "Mind blowing, bro." Yeah. Every time I test it, I think to myself, "This is the time. It's not going to work because there's no way. It's got to be chance. Right. There's no way it can work that well." So did you uh, hand does. any out to any of your relatives? I or? did. So I told, and these are remember, these are all my aunts and uncles. They're all in their fifties, sixties, uh, and then my cousins who are all in their you know thirties and, and yeah. early forties. Dude, because wine gave me the worst hangovers out of all drinks in my entire life. Yeah. The worst hangover I ever got yeah. hangover I ever got was when I drank uh, too much red wine. It was terrible. So these all these people, family members, 50, 60, Nobody in my family is a drinker. Most of my, my the people in my family has bad um, you know side effects from alcohol. So if we do drink, it's super rare, and then everybody kind of maintains a little bit and doesn't drink too much because. They tend to feel bad the next day. So I, we had a big group thread, and I told them all, hey, this is the company I'm working with. Do some research. My, my, you know, my aunt is a, you know, she's a certified uh, dietitian, so she's researching it. You know, most of my family's into health, so they were into it. So they're checking it out. Everybody wanted to try it out. Brought it on the trip. Everybody did the protocol, took the Z-Biotics, and then we went wine tasting. And uh, none of us, except for I think my aunt, one of my aunts, everybody drank the wine. So you know when you go to wine tasting and you go from place to place to place all day long? Yeah. After a certain point, you just taste the wine and you pour the rest out because you're smashed. Yeah. Everybody just kept drinking it. They were all trusting that this thing was going to work or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's so, a lot of faith. Blind faith there. Yeah. Right? So it was fun. We all got totally, you I mean, know. the health ambassador was there. So I, I mean, yeah, I felt, they probably felt pretty that's safe. That's right, dude. Like if he says it's good, it's yeah. good. So we all got totally <laughs> smashed. protected. We all got destroyed and smashed. And um, the next day I get messages from everybody. It feels fine. Everybody's feel fine. Now here's the same thing that we experienced. Still had bad sleep. So it's not going to fix that for you. Um, you still need to make sure you got to drink water, but nobody got a hang, uh, excuse me, nobody got a headache. Nobody felt, felt that toxic and flame feeling. Um, uh, several of my family no nausea, members, no throwing up. No. Wow. So, and, and, so and, rad. and now you're still going to get drunk. If you take this, it's not going to prevent, you know, alcohol toxicity. So don't be stupid. Um, but, uh, everybody was totally so fine. I'm, I'm blown like, away. I'm like nine for wow. 10. I like everybody I know that I can give it to that. I know that drinks I give it to. And only one person has told me they didn't notice anything, but that's like, they're like, I couldn't tell if it really helped or didn't. Mm. I mean, I wasn't hung over the next day, but I wasn't sure if it really helped out or not. Everybody else literally was like, Holy shit! Yeah, yeah. Where do I get it? And then I'm like sending it to him right away. Well, like, when we tested it, that was the that was the clincher for me because oh, I haven't I haven't drank like that since I was 20. Well, no. we we fucked up. Is what we did. We that messed was even up. worse than I was 20. We yeah. met. We miscalculated the 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 rules of the game that we were playing, and we just went way too hard. And that was the most drunk. Too I'd hard. Been. Too fast. In 20, I hadn't been that drunk in 20 years, at least 15 to 20 years. So, yeah. and the fact that I woke that I even woke up the next day and was and able to come to out. work. Yeah. And I did work out. I banged out some episodes. That yeah, was yeah. impressive yeah, yeah. on so, our part. Put, put, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, speaking of sponsors, you had brought up something the other day uh, about our other sponsor, Butcher Box, um, and you said that something about customer service. Like, what happened? Well, so Butcher Box, I've gotten DMs from people about their their customer service and how responsive and good they are. I've never had to use. Have you guys ever had to message them 
uh, for anything at all? I, I messaged them when I wanted to tra- uh, change my Nothing. my cadence of once a month to every other month, and mm. they were they fixed it right away. Okay. It wasn't a big deal. So here's what happened to me, right? So I got my so we, I'm on the monthly subscription. So every month my box comes, and I have you know New York steaks in there, and uh, I think I have ribeye and uh, some some bacon and you know ground beef, whatever, mm-hmm. and it just comes yeah. like clockwork. Totally forgot that it was going to come right when I was on. Oh, uh, when you were leaving? When I was in Maui. With, Ooh, I with did Jessica. the same thing now that I remember. Yeah. Did you? Uh huh. Okay. So the box came, and the way the guy, the way I, where, where I live, either it'll get delivered at my front door or it'll get delivered in front of your garage. In front of my garage. I hate when they do that. I know. When it, when, when, and that's just the person delivering, right? When it, Comes in the front door, uh, and I've had this happen before. I have really cool neighbors. They'll see it, mm-hmm. and they'll they'll take my package or whatever. And I come home, they'll tell me. Um, but with, there has been some some mail theft in the area. We, I had never experienced this. It got delivered to the garage where a lot of people aren't going to see. So I didn't expect to see it there when I got back, and sure enough, it wasn't there. So it must have got stolen or whatever. Mm. So I sent a message to the, the butcher box team and said, "Hey, you know, I, I was on vacation. Just wanted to see what their." protocol was um didn't they didn't know that it was you know mind pump or whatever just the customer i was talking to a regular customer service person and they sent me another box yeah that's cool just like that i told them no questions asked no someone stole it hey actually in fact they sent me a long message that said hey we're really sorry that that happened you know make sure you check to see if it's over in different places let us know what happened i I email them back i'm like no it looks like it's gone no problem you're going to get tracking for another box we're just going to replace it for you what great oh, customer Oh, it's awesome. Service. I had where, okay, so I'm doing this this diet right now where I'm like increasing, obviously, the amount of meat I'm eating every day. So <laughs> we uh, we upped our amount and we didn't see that in our box. And, and, you know, I just had to barely mention it. The next time, you know, was was basically like almost triple. It was like double the amount, but like it was with some extras in there with a bunch of bacon and, and a bunch of like, you know, ground patties, you know, and all kinds of stuff for me to eat. So it was awesome. Awesome. What now? What what is the the most common piece of meat that you're eating right now? Because you're you're elimin- you're doing like the like a hardcore elimination. Yeah, like diet. strip steaks and uh, it, primarily trying to eat as much steak as I can, and then ground beef. Uh, and then, you know, I'm trying to cycle in like this week, uh, some fish, so salmon or, or halibut, like we're trying to like get that like somewhat in there, but mainly like it's, it's literally just steak, like as much steak in the morning, you know, afternoon. And then, uh, you know, sprinkle in like it right now I have like deli meats in between, which is kind of not, you know, great. Cause it's all processed. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm trying to eliminate that, but, um, like it, it, it just takes a lot of prep on, you know, grilling grilling it all. I'm becoming a master at the grill though. I'm going to be honest. Like I've been like just destroying these steaks. They're so good. Is your, is your heart, your heartburn symptoms, all that stuff gone? Nothing. Wow. Yeah. Nothing dude. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's crazy what you can figure out with an elimination diet. I, I was always blown away with clients mm-hmm. when they would do that and see things like skin issues or dandruff. I had a client once who, who had just issues with dandruff most of their life and they would control it with certain medications and stuff that the doctor gave them. And just through our own training, I, I had them do an elimination diet because I, I tend to do that with, with clients when I first start working, depending on the client. Mm-hmm. And their dandruff uh, went away. And we actually pieced together uh, that there were there were certain, uh, what was it? I think it was bananas. It was something really weird that was causing this issue that they ate all the time. So they cut it out and the dandruff went away. I never thought that food could affect the body in that at that time at least. Uh, in that way, I was actually a bit in disbelief. So um, now, is your strategy right now to just uh, do it as an elimination diet and then slowly start to introduce stuff? Or are you trying to follow it for a while? This is the second time you've done this now. So yeah. what's, what's the plan here? No, yeah, that's the plan. It it it's going for another like I want to do close to a month. Uh, and then I'm already going to probably like three weeks more realistically. And then the fourth week, I'm going to start adding in vegetables one by one. Uh, and then just assess it from there. And then maybe like three, four weeks after that of just meat and veggies, then I'm going to do, go back to like the full balanced carbs, you know, fats. Are you doing it alone or is it, are you in, uh, Courtney's doing it with me, which is good. I was actually doing this mainly to support her in wanting to do something outside of her norm. She's never done anything other than like drop, you know, reduce calories somewhat. Um, so this is, 
between that, we realized too that like we're cutting alcohol out, which is one thing that she was like, I didn't really consider that part of it, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, duh, like you don't think like meat and water, like <laughs> the, uh, the, that's it, right? Uh, so it's already having like a dramatic effect uh, with her. Uh, in her body's like responding so it's pretty cool like it's cool she's getting excited about that and then just kind of using that as a catalyst to then now pay attention pay attention to what you're reintroducing coming back into the diet what how you respond to each one of those and what you can you know really take from that going forward what's benefiting you and what's not and yep. what, now, what is she noticing? You're, you're saying her body, like, did she have, was she having gut issues and stuff? Yeah, she was carrying like a like a constant bloat all the time. Uh, yeah. yeah, she was very much pushed out, and like it was like she she thought it was like a postural thing, you know, and like we were working on that quite a bit, uh, you know, with her hip position and everything else, and then it's just it was just this thing that like some days it was like it felt flatter, but for the most part it was always like this little push and this little pooch and that's already getting like like dramatically like tightened up oh nice sometimes i wonder like the the results that people feel from this like how much of it is is in, in result of the all meat or you know if you were to actually track calorie wise like if it's just a reduction yeah like are you like you know i wonder if it's Taking oh, somebody yeah. from 2,900 or 3,000 calories, which is probably somewhere around where you eat on a regular basis, and now you're like eating 1,500. Totally. And if you were to just say, hey, I, I'm going to stick to a 1,500-calorie diet for X amount of time, would would you potentially feel some of the similar effects? I, I'm, I'm always curious to that when I hear... I, like, you could make a great argument for that, and I totally would buy into that. Because, And that's the other thing is I think a lot of people that are like less attracted to tracking would you know, see lots of benefit with this because you eat and you're satisfied, uh, but you're still really low calorie. Yeah. And it's, that's really the benefit of it. I mean, for the most part, besides like you do get nutrients and everything from meat. So it's not like you're super deficient, no. but at the same time, like, you know, it's not the the ideal way going forward. Well, that's mm. how I felt about keto. I mean, I remember when we ran the keto diet, uh, years back, like it, it definitely, uh, it was hard for me to get enough calories. I, it, the just constant eating yeah. high fat and protein and a lot of meat, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of red meat that we were consuming and butter and stuff like that like i was just satiated i didn't i couldn't get palate it. fatigue hits you pretty hard mm -hmm. you just don't want to eat anymore mm -hmm. and then you know, what's funny is they make keto processed foods to <laughs> and so people start snacking on those because then you can't eat more you know what oh, i mean right, right. right isn't that funny that is funny. um dude i uh are you guys seeing what's happening in san francisco right now no okay oh, so man. so it's like a war zone there well the they're reaching um some interesting uh, levels right now they're reaching peak insanity i think um walgreens is starting to shut down uh locations and you know walgreens has a real strong uh presence in san francisco yeah uh they're shutting them down because the laws and the the the, the policy there is to not go after people who are stealing for like under i forgot what the, pri the amount was like under six hundred dollars or something like that there's like an amount so if you steal under that you basically they they don't do slap anything. on the wrist. Yeah, they don't do anything to you. So their car theft and break-ins are through the roof. But what's happened now? It's a new thing. People are walking, and I just I'm, I just watched a video of this. My brother he lives in San Francisco. He sent wow. me a video of this. People are walking into Walgreens with their uh, with a bag, a, a plastic garbage bag, and just just throwing. No, shit in they're them. not. Yes, they are. No, they're not. I yes, believe they are. It, I will. Sh I'll I'll find the it's video and I'll show you. They're literally it's th aggressive. Just throwing, just taking deodorant or razors or whatever, and they're smart. They're going under the amount that the that where the where they'll start to get in big trouble, and they'll just put it in their bags, and then walk out. And the the people there can't do anything if they try to stop them and get physical. They could get hurt, or if they hurt the other person, they themselves could get in trouble. The cops are like, "What are we gonna do? We 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 arrest them. They're out that same day, and they go back and do it." My brother says that he saw some of these guys doing this dumping stuff in their bag taking the bag going around the corner laying it out in the street and then selling them for like you know deodorant yeah. for 50 cents or a dollar or whatever making money off so walgreens is like we're, we're shutting down wow. if you guys aren't going to protect us that city is going to become a wasteland what it, the yes fuck kind of what is it, going on dude it's it's, it's like mad max it's getting really shit. it's getting really crazy over i mean there. what is the desired outcome of, of, of setting a law like what, these what, what are, are they trying to do or who are they trying to protect by doing that these are policies that sa that are feel good uh sound good policies for example 
we don't want to arrest people uh, who are not hurting anybody but doing drugs on the street. We should leave them alone. So what's the result of that? Again, my brother lives in San Francisco. He's very successful, makes a lot of money, so it's not like he lives in a bad part of the area, whatever. But he'll walk outside of his complex, turn a corner, and he'll show me. He'll film it. And there's a, there's people just injecting themselves with heroin, heroin right on the street, half naked, or taking a crap right there on the street. Cops white rock right by, don't say anything, don't do anything. He's like, dude, he goes, I don't know what, what to do. This place is getting crazy. I, I just don't get it. You know, people that live there love that place, dude. I, I don't get it. It's still there's they, a they, there's a culture. Sure, like oh, it's got so much coal. Oh yeah, uh, it sure does. Yeah, yeah. there's no, still no some. Thanks. Look, look, there's some amazing places there. Still has some great stuff, but it's starting to oh, to man. turn a little bit. The residents it's there are starting been, to get it's been that way for pissed a long off. Time. You know they have it's getting the, worse. The city pays for groups of people. I, I'm, I forgot what they call them, the poop patrol or whatever. And they're <laughs> what? They're, oh they're, my god. Yes. San Francisco's uh, maybe Doug can Google, the, Google this. San Francisco's wasn't it you who told me patrol. that somebody was just like takes a shit in a in a was in a store. People were doing stuff yep. like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. So and so again, you don't get in trouble for it. So uh, like they, they shut down like public restrooms or something like that, but then they can't stop you from pooping somewhere. I forgot what you told me. And I, no, just they just not they don't they're not persecuted. The, the cops are told that it's a low priority. So so they have these. This these is how diseases spread. Big time, dude. The people are like this is why we have laws to prevent people from doing shit like this. Well, uh, uh, California, is, like L.A., for I think has already gotten sued because L.A.'s got a big problem with this, some of the stuff too. Because when they poop on the street, it goes right into the sewer. It doesn't get treated. Yeah, washes out to the ocean, and then it's killing uh, marine life. Yeah. yeah, and so environmentalists are like, uh, like what does someone have? Oh, to oh yeah, look, look at that. San Francisco has a poop patrol to deal with its feces problem. And workers make more than $184 a year in salary and benefits. $184,000. $1,000, excuse me. $184,000 a year. To be on the, the poop the, patrol? On the poop patrol? Yeah. Wow. I, I, how, we should apply. Man, does that that is, not, that's a well-paying job. Does that not sound like insanity to you? That your tax dollars are going to pay these people six figures to walk around and clean up human poop. That has to be bullshit. There's no. no way someone's getting paid 100 Right here. All members of the city's poop patrol workers are entitled to $71,760 a year, plus an additional $112,918, oh, excuse me, $112,000 in benefits, such as health care and retirement savings, the San Francisco Chronicle reported. It's just getting crazy it's over there. It's it's insanity. It's a, yeah, it's, it's extreme. Now, not uh, policy. Now, hearing that with. makes me think that there's like an underlining motives, and it's really more about creating more jobs that we can tax more, so you can pay. That's not like, a job you create. That's just a waste because uh, it's tax money. I mean, you just created a job. There was no such thing as a poop patrol. I've never heard of a poop. patrol. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. Now you have and special now interest. You, now you heard can a Paw Patrol. That's a great cartoon. Now right? you can actually make yeah. make six poop figures patrol. picking people's feces up. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And what what do you have to what what does someone have to do to you for you to take a shit in their store? Well, so <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, like I've been pissed before. Like I was I was just when we were up in Tahoe just recently and I was so mad. We were we were waiting. I, I this bothers me so much when you're at a grocery store, especially when it's a busy one, and there's like two checkers and the the line like was all the way down the the aisle, like, like one checker. and everybody's all, still just like putting stuff on the shelves. Ju yeah, just yeah. like I'm like, can't you guys like, call another hello? checker? Or wouldn't you think that you would schedule on busy weekends to have more than that? Like that almost made me take a shit on the floor. <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, I'm, well, I'm waiting a little too long. Yeah, uh, make me wait any longer. I'm gonna shit on this floor right here. Uh, well, so. In San Francisco, yeah. you can you can yeah, you get, yeah, exactly. you get away it's with it. Totally no, legal. No, they they just elected an attorney general in San Francisco that said. And so what it is, it's their feel-good laws. So the Eternal General says, we don't want to make homelessness a crime. Right? Sounds good, right? We don't want to make it a crime. But what that really means is they're not going to go after people for pooping in the street, doing drugs in public streets right in front of people with dirty needles, leaving the needles on the floor. They're not going to do anything to... To enforce that kind of, or people doing petty theft because you know, oh, you know, yeah, poor that, them or whatever that is a crime. Yeah, so it's sorry, it's yeah, it's it's getting crazy. You can't and it, degrade everything just because it makes you feel better. Again, my cousins have lived there for ten years. My brothers lived there for five, I think, and they're like the last few years, it's gotten really, really bad. So it's gonna be interesting to see at what point the voters there go. Okay, hold on a second, maybe we should not vote for the same 
idiotic policies. Oh, I know. I've, I'm very conscious of this too, because it's even somewhat in Santa Cruz and we just had like a whole voting thing. And so I'm looking at like who has good ideas versus who has these same types of ideas that they're doing up there. I already see how this is playing out up there. And I'm just like, uh, okay, we need somebody that's like going to come in and be like, you know, have a hard stance on this kind of stuff. Hey, did you, this is a mental illness issue. Did you send a message to us this morning about the Fed reducing rates? Yeah, that was uh, as of the recording of this episode, they're, they cut them down um, by a half point, I believe, um, in response to the coronavirus fears, which I think is... This has to be... It was already at an all-time low. This I think they be. raised it, and then they brought it back down. Okay. Think, back but, down to where it was before? I think so, but it, it, what a, it kind of a, sends a bad message. It sends a message that, oh, we are scared. We mm -hmm. need to inject more money into the market. And you know what it did? It just flattened the market out. It didn't even give us a, a big boost. It boosted for a second and went back down. And so it's looking a little iffy. So we'll see what happens. But again, it's election season. So they're going to do everything they can to not yeah. to not show Pull everything cracks. out of the hat. Right? Well, what are you, what are your predictions like uh, based off of who gets elected? What will happen to uh, the economy? If uh, if the Democrats win and if it's someone like Bernie Sanders. The stock market will We're take. Fucked. I ma the stat. The st <laughs> you all just say it. Yeah. Hello, communism. Yeah. The, st right? the, yeah. the stock will. The, the stock market will take a Socialism massive first. crash because he's going to go after taxing and regulations and that kind of stuff. Uh, Elizabeth Warren, no chance she has in, in winning the nomination. But let's just play. If she did. No, no, let's not even play her. Let's play okay. Bernie, Biden, and Trump. That's really and maybe yeah. Bloomberg, yeah. right? Well, yeah. you know what? I'm not sure. When this episode airs, I think we'll know who the, who I, the Democrat I feel like nominees. I wish Tulsi I was in the mix. I feel, I feel like economically, you have the best chances with either Trump or Bloomberg. Economically, uh, Bloomberg's probably not going to get it. Um, again, I don't know when we're airing this episode, so I think when this episode airs, we're going to know who the the nominee is. Oh, that comes out this week. Yeah, it, uh, today is Super Tuesday. Oh, right? okay. yeah, we're recording this when they're when they're going to figure it out. Super. Re remind me what that is. Yeah, well, that's when they they they're going to figure out who gets the most delegates and who's going to be the 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 nominee for the. It's not official though. After today, is uh, it? Or it could is be. It? Oh, really? Yeah, it could be. If it's like that much of a yeah. landslide or what? Yeah, but we're seeing Biden surge right now. So I think I don't think they're going to. I don't think that the Democrat the party's not going is going to allow uh, Sanders to to win the nomination. That's my personal opinion. So I think it'll be Biden versus Trump, but we'll know we'll, when this airs. We'll it's see a if very my very extreme move. We'll see if my, if my prediction is correct. So is that what is that your prediction that we're going to see Trump versus Biden? Pro, that's that's what I that's what I think will probably happen. Wow, that's interesting because he looked like he was completely out of the race right. just like a month ago. It looked like well, what'll happen? What it looks like is starting to happen. Yeah, explain it, how that can happen because I, what I was reading, what I was watching was. Uh, Biden got absolutely destroyed, and Bloomberg put pumped so much money into his. He took a he went skyrocketing, and then it really came down to everyone saying that it's either Bloomberg or um, or uh, Bernie Sanders. And yeah. and I thought Biden was completely out of this. Now so, you're saying that he's got a so, how? How's that so possible? you have to you don't just win the nomination by having a majority of delegates. You have to get a certain number. There's a number you have to hit. And it's pretty much impossible for any of them to get the right amount uh, of, of delegates. Even if one of them's in the lead and wins a majority, they don't have the delegates. Then what happens is they, they the super delegates can decide what happens. But here's what's look like. Here's what it looks like is happening. And again, we'll see how well this podcast ages by the time it airs. But what it looks like is the Democrat Party does not want a open socialist running as their nominee because that'll be a massive extreme left turn for the you know the the left uh, now who you know, is Democrat saying Party. that just the just the right is saying no that, all the dude? all the 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 old school you know lifelong democrats lots yeah. of democrats in this uh you know that i know are afraid of sanders being the nominee um the party doesn't want someone that extreme they don't think he has a uh, they don't think he has the power the ability to get elected uh in a general election he's never been asked really straight questions like why was your honeymoon in the Soviet Union or you're so against millionaires but you have three mansions or stuff like that. Nobody's ever asked them that. So I th and, and not only that, but socialism is even though it's more popular today than it ever has been, generally speaking for a general election, it still would do very terrible. So they know he would lose. They think it would destroy it would damage the party itself for mm. electing him. So what I think might happen is that the other candidates who know they have no choice will convince their delegates to vote for Biden. Mm. So now you'd have Bloomberg and Warren and everybody so else. behind the scenes, they might work together to try and snub them out. To snub them out. Yeah. And so then Biden will end up winning mm. um, the nomination. But again, we'll, we'll see how well this uh, this episode well, ages. 
not having like any like affiliation with either party. Like when I got my ballot, I'm just like, what? I, I didn't have any options to to vote for the presidential candidates. Oh, uh, even for the not for the they don't the, trust even you. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I was like, what? Like what? What is this? I could do all like the you know the local community stuff, but you couldn't do like the main like most important thing. Yeah, I don't know. We'll that's, see what that's happens. Bullshit. We'll see. All right, our first question is from Jake Parker Fit. Why do bodybuilders always, almost always seem to opt for strictly clean eating as opposed to a flexible dieting approach? I picked this question just to piss Justin off. Oh, yeah, I got so much for this. <laughs> no, uh, no I, I, think, uh, no, I think there's a good point here. First of all, uh, we've talked before on this podcast, and this person probably has not heard us talk about this, so I figured this would be a good uh, topic for uh labels and fast food and um eating food that you did not weigh measure and cook yourself uh can be off and mm -hmm. can be dramatically off uh, you're talking 20 to 30 percent different from what the label says or what the fast food restaurant tells you um, when you are competing or or if you're bodybuilding if you really take that shit serious uh, and you're tracking weighing and measuring uh, and you have uh, quote unquote flexible dieting to where it allows you uh, fast food every week inside your diet or a cheat day or whatever that in, in the diet on a consistent basis, really tough to be precise. I mean, there's no way. So I had like a, when I was competing, I had a, I would say I, um, you know, and I, and I hate flexible dieting and all these terms and shit like that. But if, if we were going to, if we're going to use that, uh, I, I had a flexible diet up until probably the last four to six weeks because I could still be off by 20% of my calorie intake and still be seeing progress. If I was, uh, you know, changing my programming up really well, I was, you know, increasing my, my steps and movement and slowly starting to restrict, uh, overall calories and, and, I would be fine, even if I was off, give or give, give or take twenty or thirty percent on a a meal or two. It wasn't a big deal, but once I hit about four weeks out, uh, for sure. Sometimes even about six weeks out, depending on how how for sure I, or how precise uh, I needed to be or how far out I was body fat percentage. Um, I would I would not do any flexible dieting. I would cook and make everything uh, that I was going to consume, and I would just I get it really comes down to how serious you you take bodybuilding. If you want to be the best at it or you want to have full control of your results and know why or why not, you're not seeing the the change that you should be. Uh, you don't take the chance of, you know, even Chipotle uh, weighing, you know, scooping your food in. Have you ever gone through a Chipotle line and watched what one kid makes for your fucking burrito bowl and then what another one does? Like, yeah, you yeah. got the heavy handed kid I, and you got the. I memorize the heavy handed one. I'm like, I'm going when he's working. And, and, <laughs> and what people need to understand is that the label that, the, that, that Chipotle or Five Guys puts up there. That they 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 have measurements that everybody is you know supposed to be following. That that those those macronutrients are supposed to be within twenty to thirty percent, right? So, but th that doesn't take into account also that the kid who's been trained to scoop exactly a quarter cup is scooping a quarter cup. So not only can the macronutrients be off on the label because FDA allows that much flexibility for restaurants and and labels. But then in addition to that, you have human error that's in there also. So, I mean, I, and I've done this before where I've taken a Chipotle bowl and I've gone home and I've separated it out. I've measured it and weighed it and seen, I mean, we're talking like a three, 500 calorie swing. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. usually more. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah, almost because, always because the it, other direction. It's in the best interest of a, a food company to under to less. Yeah. Under report calories. So they'll put together their meal to get tested or whatever, and they'll report 500 calories. But then when they make the food, it's also in their best interest to give you more than the calories say. And the reason why they do that is because you know you you get more food, you're more likely to buy more food. So because you think it's more value, um, so the, the 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 measurements can definitely be off. I mean, one thing you need to understand about uh, bodybuilding is of all um, of all sports I can think of uh, off the top of my head. Bodybuilding, uh, nutrition plays the most important role in bodybuilding, more than any other sport. Because with bodybuilding, when you're down to 3% body fat and you're on stage, uh, a little bit of water retention 
uh, can make you lose a contest. You know, the difference between your mum, your muscles looking a little bit fuller, uh, can make you lose a contest. And this all boils down to precision. It's like precision engineering with your nutrition. So an easy way to do that for a bodybuilder is to weigh and measure whole natural foods. They know exactly what's in it. And if you look at bodybuilders' diets, which by the way, I don't think anybody should follow a bodybuilder diet except for a bodybuilder who's competing. When you look at the meals and stuff that they that they post on social media, what you end up with, what you know, typically see are the same meal mm-hmm. measured out five or six times. So you'll see five or six containers of identical looking you know, chicken, rice, and broccoli or something like that. And then maybe they want it to be predictable. It is. So what they're doing is they're sitting down, they're saying, okay, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm down to 6%. I got to drop 300 calories. I need, you know, this many grams of protein, this many grams of carbs. I need this much fiber um, and this much fat. And so then they take uh, all the protein that they need and they just divide it by five. So one here, one here, one here. And they have their, all their meals planned out. It's definitely not a uh, a long term approach for success. It's definitely can contribute to a bad relationship with food. Um, I've met more than my share of ex bodybuilders and competitors who have really really bad um, eating patterns after they stop competing because the only way they know how to eat aside from eat whatever you want is to eat that way. So it's like you're either you know extreme in one direction, yeah, it's on or off the wagon, type yeah, of or extreme in the other direction. Uh, but if look, if you're confused about flexible dieting versus strict clean eating, just a real quick, easy breakdown, right? So flexible dieting, you're just trying to hit your macro targets. That's it. So I'm eating, my goal is 100 grams of protein, 200 grams of carbs, 60 grams of fat. Uh, and then I can, whatever I can put in that, mm. as long as I hit those numbers, I'm all good. Bodybuilders do that as well. But the difference is the way they go about it is not by just throwing whatever they want. They will typically stick to whole uh, unprocessed foods that they can fit within there, that they they can measure with, like Adam said, with absolute perfect precision. That, in fact, is what separates, oftentimes what separates the winner, first place from second place, is was the first, the first place guy typically was more perfect and more anal about their their food than the other guy. Well, the average- More um, anal, please. The the average American- (laughs) Uh, that you know, we we know everybody knows that the average American diet is terrible. So the average American that 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 eats terrible that decides they're going to flexible diet and and diet any diet in that in in a sense is is probably better than what they're currently doing is is going to see pretty good results. And so there's a there's a a lot of room and a little a lot more flexibility for just the average person who doesn't have to get on stage in exactly six weeks and yeah. present the best version of themselves. So, you know, who cares if they overeat by 300 calories one day and they stall their progress for a day? It's not a big deal if that person, you know, got the heavy-handed Timmy at Chipotle for that one day. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not a big fucking deal. He's you're, got them heavy hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, you're I still going to, you're still going to, if you're making good choices and you're trying to follow a macro, uh, you know, your macros and you're, you're even being off by 20% if you're doing everything else right, exercise and staying in a, in a calorie-restricted diet, you're probably going to be just fine. But, you know, if you're a, if you were a bodybuilder, your, your timing is everything. And, I mean, and you also got to think about this, okay, when, you know, I've only, only one time in my life, I've gotten down to single-digit body fat many times, but I've never, only once did I ever get down below like 6 5%. There's only one time. And the thing that tripped me out the most about it, there's a lot of weird things, by the way, that happen to your body when you get that lean. And I was quite aware, I was an adult, you know, when I did it. And I, I remember tripping out over a few things. One of the main things that I tripped out over was this. If you're 15% body fat and you go up by a half percent or a percent, you can't really tell. You can't really tell that much. You're 4% body fat. You go up a percent. You just you just went up 20, 25% more body fat on your body than yes, you had before. Yes. 25% because 1% is a lot more when you only have 4% body fat than when you have 15%. Mm-hmm. So it was like I had to be like – I had to be very, very perfect with my nutrition because I, I go up a percent. When you see the – diff, the difference between a 4% and 5% body fat on stage is glaring. Yeah. The difference between 15 and 16% – you can't, you can't, you can't tell at all. Not only that, but when you're really, really lean, water retention can look like it adds two percent body fat on you. Just stuff that makes you hold water. And one thing that bodybuilders are, are really, really exceptional at is identifying 
the the changes in their in water in their body by foods. So you'll see a lot of bodybuilders like avoid or you know zero calorie sodas. It says zero calories, but they'll avoid them because like nah, it makes me hold water. Or they'll avoid you know protein shakes or other things that even though the calories are all calculated and it still will keep them the same macros. Like nah, if I when I eat that, I don't look as sharp. And it sounds silly. But it's it's a real thing. I, I told I told you I tested this. Like I I did a, a prep where um, I allowed shakes and bars in every single day. Every single day I had at least one or two shakes or bars, uh, and I had less whole foods and uh, dieted for a show. And then I had another show where I didn't allow any shakes or bars and I did nothing but whole foods. And the the show that I did. All Whole Foods, I looked better. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I can't explain it to you. Not, I can't for sure tell you why that is, but you do when you when you get that lean, you notice the the most subtle differences. And for the average person, that doesn't matter at all. Yeah, that it doesn't, doesn't matter. It does, that, that doesn't matter. No, you want to go based off of health, how the food makes you feel. Does it make you want to eat more? Does it make you want to eat less? But yeah, I think some some of the stuff you'll hear from bodybuilders that sounds silly to people who understand nutrition, like. Um, you know, eating fish thins the skin, right? You'd hear it from bodybuilders and you roll your eyes and you're like, what are you talking about? I think what they're talking about is that some people will 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 eat only a certain food or avoid other foods and just notice they're holding less water. They're just less inflamed. And it could very well be that they went from eating chicken to eating fish and that's what did it because there's a lot of very complex things that happen in the body. 100%. So bodybuilders are the most extreme dieters in the world um, and that's why you see them following a particular way of eating versus flexible dieting. Next question is from Travis Craft 24. You often mention cardio adaptation. Does our body get too efficient at basic human movements such as walking as well? Okay, so I want to be really clear. I had this conversation with my, in fact, it was the day we went uh, wine tasting, like I talked about at the beginning of the episode. My cousin Alex was there. Really, really smart kid, super successful uh, in the tech world. And I love talking with him because he'll ask me questions about fitness and nutrition that are, um, they're, they're just really good questions. They're, they're, they're good questions to be asked. So he says, you know, I listen to your podcast and you talk about how doing lots and lots and lots of cardio and cutting my calories um, slows my metabolism down. He goes, why, he goes, why is that a bad thing? And I said, it's, it's not, it's not a bad thing that your metabolism adapts. I said, it's just, it can be a bad thing in the context of uh, normal life where you have access to tons of food all around you and you're not that active. And so having a faster metabolism is just makes it easier for you to maintain a healthy body weight in this environment. But said other than that, it's not a problem. So this cardio adaptation, uh, and so here, let me explain real quick what cardio adaptation is. It's when you do a lot of anything, your body gets good at it. And part of what it does to get good at it is it burns less calories doing it. Mm. So if you took, for example, two top athletes, one was a uh, top level runner, like one of the best marathon runners in the world, incredible endurance. The other one was a marathon swimmer and was the best in the world. So both exceptional cardio, exceptional en endurance, phenomenal performance. And you tested their caloric burn when they did the sport that they're good in and then you switch them. You had the runner swim, and you had the swimmer run. Yeah. What you would find is they would actually burn more calories doing the thing that they weren't that they weren't used to or that they weren't good at because their bodies weren't as efficient doing it. So doing lots of and that's that's one piece of it. There's more than that as well because cardio burns lots of calories, doesn't require lots of strength. One of the ways your body becomes better at it is by paring muscle down and making you just this smaller, less muscle, less calorie burning, efficient machine. Not a bad thing. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want a faster metabolism, it's going opposite direction, right? So does the body get too efficient at basic human movements? What do you mean by too efficient? Uh, yeah. There's no such thing. Um, more efficiency is probably better. If you walk a lot, is that going to slow your metabolism down compared to what? Let's say you walk you know, seven miles every day because you're a-, a Yeah, versus a, what, sitting down? Exactly. So you walk seven miles a day because you're a mail carrier. So now your body became very efficient at, at walking. Uh, compare that to sitting all day, you're better off. You're far better off. Now compare that to lifting weights. You're going to, over time, burn more calories lifting weights 
uh, just through a faster metabolism uh, type of deal. Or at least I should say, maybe not burn more total calories, but burn more calories at rest uh, because you have a faster metabolism. So I want to be clear because we talk about this all the time, and I don't want to send the message that the natural metabolic adaptations that happen from doing certain activities or- It's a bad thing. It's, co- not, a, it's, bad, it's not a bad thing. It's your, it's your metabolism acting exactly uh, the way it should. Next question is from Ryan Megdans. How do you ensure you don't lose too much muscle when cutting? I'm very attached to the gains and don't want to see them go. Well, there's there's research out that talks about this in, in uh, regards to protein intake. Mm. So this, this is when uh, this is probably when it's most important that you are hitting those upper limits of your protein intake, at least in my opinion. Like now, if, when you were competing, Adam, did you measure your lean body mass before you started your cut and then after to see oh, yeah. how it, so what would it look like and what would you do? What did you find that helped? So, I I mean, here's, it, it, there's two things um, that I did that I, uh, that not a lot of my peers I felt did a really good job. This is also, I think, one of the advantages that I had. Um, Many competitors would go into their cut, and then as soon as their six or eight or some of them 10 or 12-week cut started, uh, reduction of calories like crazy, uh, intense cardio uh, every single day, and then that just got more and more intense and longer and longer as, as time went on. Now, what I what I knew about that, that and one thing that all bodybuilders did really well is protein. I mean, that, that's like been the, the magical macronutrient forever. We all know that it's what builds and hangs on to muscle. So most bodybuilders got that part right. So I've always did it. I did that well. All of them did that well um, of keeping um, my protein at least to a one-to-one ratio. Maybe I'd even push 1.5 as I'm as I'm cutting uh, per, uh, grams per pound, right? Uh, but one thing that I was careful not to do is knowing that I'm in a, a calorie deficit is I didn't want to do a lot of cardio. In, in fact, I didn't do any uh, high-intensity or long duration or bouts of cardio until the final two weeks. Everything up until that point was lists or walking. So it was all diet and exercise, yes. regular exercise. Yeah, all of it was, I managed it through, ca- and when you do that, uh, the theory is I'm not, uh, to like to the last question we just talked about right now, is I'm not sending a, a signal to my body to become efficient at running and cardio. Because if I'm doing that like a lot of competitors are, I don't care how much protein you intake, the body eventually will start to pare down that muscle because it's not advantageous for it to have it while it's running on a treadmill for two hours a day every single day. So I didn't want to send that signal to my body when I'm already in a caloric deficit. So I would keep protein intake up high. I would avoid high-intensity cardio while I'm also in a caloric deficit. To me, that's like a recipe for disaster when it comes to Mm. hanging on to muscle. And for the most part, uh, I did really, really good as far as keeping – all the muscle that I built in the off season or when I was bulking. Uh, it's inevitable when you go to that extreme of a cut, like I would get to or getting down to 3% body fat on stage, I would always lose like a couple pounds, but that it would always come off in the very last couple weeks when I was like just, I began ex- pushing extreme. As soon as I get to that final, when I, I would say like, you know, everything, everything goes the final two weeks. When I come into the last two weeks, then it's like I'm doing as much cardio as I can. I'm cutting as hard as I can, health in, in as as in a healthy way as I can, uh, because it's my final two weeks, and I just want to shred everything off. And my body would respond because I hadn't done any intense cardio up in that point. But you know, uh, if I lost eight or ten pounds in those final two weeks, you know, it would probably be uh, almost a 50-50 ratio. Ten pounds come off, I'd probably lose five pounds of muscle and five pounds of body fat doing it. But that's what it would take to get all the way down to three percent body fat. Uh, but keeping it on the the two things that I coach clients on, and then how I would manage my my own diet is high protein intake of and when I'm on a calorie restricted diet, I'm actually avoiding doing uh, high intensity cardio. I think that's the mistake that a lot of people make when they're trying to shred down is they think that that's going to get to their results faster. and they will see the scale move faster by doing that. but you put it you you risk, paring down muscle just as fast by doing that. Mm. Now, now, Justin, you have zero experience uh, bodybuilding and dieting like that, but you have Isn't a lot that of obvious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you have a lot of you have a lot of athletic experience and working with athletes. And yeah. I know in football, you typically don't have to 
try to drop weight. Maybe some positions, but for the most part, it's not really. Yeah, for the most part, it's it's gaining weight. But what about other sports where people are trying to reduce? Because like wrestling, yeah, yeah wrestling because or, because you're looking mm-hmm. at look uh, for, for wanting to keep muscle. I mean, athletes would want to do that too. If you're trying to lose weight and right. perform. You don't want to lose muscle because that's what helps you perform. Were there any strategies that you're aware of with athletes, or was it similar to what you know, kind of what Adam was it, talking? Pretty about? similar to Adam. I mean, it, for the most part, it was really concentrating on heavy, you know, weightlifting, and that was still part of the protocol. But um, it, it was manipulating carbohydrate intake for the most part, and mm-hmm. um, you know, trying to lean out without with like bringing our protein levels up, bringing our fat levels up, and then um, you know, like reducing that down significantly. It wasn't really you can't really like expect an athlete to reduce all their cardio because most of the skills training and everything exactly. is, is a vital component. So I would actually switch that up just a little bit. And I would actually, with the athletes, we would do like, like shorter bouts. And so we would, we explosive work more cardio. explosive cardio and yeah. And we would do sprints and we do like, you know, with the salt bike and we do, uh, you know, little, little bursts, uh, at, you know, as opposed to doing our, our long winded endurance, uh, you know, component to that. So, and, and for me, it was about gaining weight when I was playing football. And so that was something where I wanted to gain weight, but I didn't want to gain it all fat. So, uh, you know, heavy weight lifting, but, uh, you know, for the most part, I was like, I was working a lot more on my endurance. Yeah. Well, the studies that they do on this, and I'm talking about general population now, right? So with general population, they've done studies where they have one group diet, one group diet plus cardio, one group diet plus lift weights. And let's see what happens. Believe it or not, the group that loses the most muscle is the group that does cardio and diet. They mm-hmm. actually lose more muscle than the group that just diets. Yeah. Now, the group that diets and lift weights either loses the least amount of muscle, loses no muscle. And I've actually seen studies, and this is probably because they had beginners uh, in some of these studies, gain a little bit of muscle, which is a very, very difficult thing to do. Well, I would gain when, on, when I was on anabolics. When I'm on anabolics and I was taking like a stack of something while I was going in, I could, I, I could actually, in a cut, put on muscle while I'm also well, well, so this brings me to the most important mm. point that I think is more important than even having the, the making sure your protein's super high, lift weights. Yeah. yeah, That's the most important you thing. You got to keep I, that in the mix. If, also, you're, if you're losing weight and your primary form of exercise is heavy strength training, then the odds that you're going to lose minimal muscle are highest. That's the most important because it's sending a signal. Your body is trying to prioritize muscle simul- while simultaneously shedding body fat because you're in a deficit. And that signal has to be effective, appropriate, and loud. And in my experience, unless you're super advanced and you know what you're doing, the best way to lift when you're trying to diet for general pop, low reps, long rest periods, traditional strength training. I also think there's a lot of value in scheduling a majority of your carbs and calories around your workout. Mm. Yeah. So if I'm in a cut and I know I'm only consuming, say, 2,000 calories, so that would be a really dramatic cut for me back then, uh, I would want to eat like a bulk of those 2,000 calories uh, leading up to the workout and right after the workout. And that's just to fuel the... The workout. Yeah. It just, it, you know, the, the theory behind that is if I'm going to be putting this physical demand, I was training pretty hard uh, towards the uh, the end or heading into a show. So I know I'm training intensely, uh, even, even, even lifting weights. I want to make sure I'm very well fueled because I want my body to tap into that. And again, not also pare down muscle to fuel me through a workout. So the theory is, okay, making sure that my glycogen levels are, are, are filled up. So I have that resource while I'm lifting. And then right afterwards, when my body's like a sponge and want to absorb, I want to make sure I'm loading it full of nutrients. Then I don't really care if, you know, from hours, you know, if I worked out at noon, but from hours five to eight o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, I had very little calories whatsoever because I'm not doing anything. I'm laying around, I'm watching TV, I'm sitting at home. I'm not pushing the, the body and that pushing the body hard and also being calorically restricted is what that's where people end up losing muscle mass and it's mm. not that the body burns the muscle because you're doing that it's just that that's the signal you're sending you're saying like we've got no fuel plus you're trying to push it really hard so it's going to adapt and get efficient at that and i don't want to do that if i'm going to push the body i want my body to know that it has reserve or calories or something there to utilize so i don't send that signal probably one of the most important things you can do when you're losing weight uh one of the most important things you can monitor is muscle mass if you can prevent yourself from losing muscle mass while you're getting leaner, you're probably doing a lot of things right. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. That's a very important thing. If you just do that, if and the way I would do it with clients is either through body fat tests or just are you strong? How's your strength? If we're losing weight and you're losing a lot of strength, uh-oh, we're doing something wrong. But if we're maintaining strength or I see your muscle mass not going down and you lost, you know, 5 or 10 pounds, we're doing the right stuff. 